Hello tank fans. I've decided to put together a short, um, this is me we're talking about so we'll see how short it is, but a short video about the newly included site behavior in Gunner Heat PC because I've seen a lot of confusion about this on the Steam page, in the Gunner Heat PC Discord, in YouTube comments, all over the place. And what's happening here is kind of a fundamental disconnect between how things work in the real world and how people are used to things working in games, particularly uh, other games that they may have been playing for the past several years. We won't name any names here, but we all know who we're talking about. So just to kind of cover what the issue is, maybe for those who haven't played Gunner Heat PC or haven't played for a while and haven't experienced it themselves, we're going to start out with the M60A3 here. We're in the Fun Drive mission just because uh, Grafenbuhr, which is a better map to demonstrate this on, tends to not get along with my OBS. So in the name of keeping a relatively cons consistent frame rate, we're on the Fun Drive mission on Point Alpha. We're going to go into the Gunner's primary site and we're going to start moving. Just one click of cruise control to begin with, and almost immediately you can see that if I try and hold the, start, the site steady, for instance on this tree, it's shaking and it's blurring. Even at 9 kilometers an hour, it's kind of difficult to get precise aim out of. If we bump it up one more click to 17 kilometers an hour, the blurring is quite obnoxious, the shaking is pretty severe, and of course as we increase speed, it just gets worse and worse. In the M60A1, the Rise, it's even more noticeable um, because it does have the older, purely optical sight with the uh, you know, old-fashioned uh, electromechanical fire control system and the coincidence rangefinder. Once we get over this hill, we'll be able to see again out in the distance. But as you can already see, the sight is shaking and blurring, which is something it never really did before, and something that most people are not used to. Can we make this gradient just? So let's continue. Uh, we'll give it a couple clicks of cruise control. Let's pick a relatively distant object to... Uh, get ourselves sorted on there. We're going to laser just so the point track holds the turret more or less on that tree. More or less, it's not perfectly accurate. And of course the M60 does not have a Delta D equivalent. The tank cannot compensate for its own motion, only for the motion of the turret relative to the hull. So we'll pick up the speed again and once again we're shaking. Even in the thermal view we are shaking quite severely. And then once we zoom in, it's almost unusable. Now let's go to the auxiliary site. It too is shaking. It's also blurring. Now, this is just my own anecdotal experience, but it seems to me that in the M60A1 Rise, the gunner's primary site is actually much worse with the shaking and blurring than the orc site is. In the M60A3, it's kind of the other way around. So in the rise pattern, I would recommend using the orc sight if you insist on firing or scanning on the move. Uh, in the M60A3, just use the gunner's primary sight. Now, this brings up an important point. Why is it doing this? Is it a bug? No, it's not a bug. This is a real problem the actual tank had. And if you're looking to stories from dino tankers or just the way the m60 was typically used they would fire from a short halt and they would stop to scan an area the m60 that we have in gunner heat pc both variants are stabilized however the add-on stabilizer upgrade was as the name suggests a retrofit the tank did not originally have any stabilization at all at the time of its introduction it's not the best solution um, it's also rocking an old school mostly analog fire control system, unlike the digital fire control system of the Abrams. It's stopgap on stopgap. There's a lot of cludge in this system. But that doesn't really explain why the sight's shaking and blurring. Why is it doing that? Well, it's hard to show in Gunner Heat PC immediately. Um, we don't have tank interiors, and there's multiple reasons why the devs have decided not to go down that route, um, which is best left to various FAQs that they've answered or dev streams where they've talked through the reasoning. But suffice to say, if you fire up Steel Beasts and jump in the M60A3 TTS, or you're able to climb in the actual tank, you'll pretty quickly get an idea. 
Tank sites have eye boxes. Optical tank sites have eye boxes, just like any other magnified conventional optic. Um, those of you who have any experience with um, rifle scopes, you know, just a normal hunting rifle scope or some kind of magnified optic like that, binoculars even, things like that, if your eyes are not in the exact right position, you get a bit of a shadow occluding part of the image. If your eyes are moving too far from the center of that eye box, the shadow will either shrink the field of view, it will kind of blur things, it will cut off, you'll get like a half moon effect on the image. It makes it difficult to use. This is not a thing that tank sites can get away with either. If your head isn't in the right position and you're getting jostled around, you will experience the same effect. And I can attest to this firsthand. I wasn't a tanker, but I have spent some time playing around with Cold War era tanks. And I can tell you right now that trying to keep a steady look through the gunner's sight as the tank is moving is pretty difficult. The brow pad's there, not so you don't brain yourself against the sight, well it's kind of there for that, but it's primarily there so you can push your head into it and try and keep as stable as possible. Um, now with particular tanks like the M60, uh, with some of its successive upgrades, the gunner's sights are not necessarily in the most comfortable position to, to lean into. Um, they might be offset to one side, or the brow pad might be a little low or high for an average height gunner. It's uncomfortable, sometimes you're doing some contortionism, or your body's not well supported, and so the tank is jostling around and you're jostling with it. That explains the blurring in particular, um, and as well as that, some of the shaking. Because with your eye moving around the eye box, you're going to get blurring and shaking as you move in and out of focus. Um, these eye boxes are quite strict. Just because it's a bigger sight than a, a rifle sight, it doesn't really, it doesn't mean that you're going to get much more leeway. So that's part of the problem: is the gunner's own movement in relation to the sight itself. We then have a second problem, which is the movement of the sight relative to the tank. This is particularly relevant in older tanks like the M60, where the stabilization is not the greatest. Uh, it does have independent stabilization for the sight. I believe it's independent to the gun. Um, but it's not the greatest quality. Um, even more modern stabilizers still aren't perfect. You know, sudden abrupt changes in movement, say if the driver slams on the brakes or if the tank hits something uh, or if you hit a sudden sharp drop, um, they can disturb the stabilizer's operation. It can't necessarily keep up. If the gun can't keep up but the sight can, you get fire gated. If neither of them can keep up, then you lose sight of the target momentarily, and you may actually experience a disturbance of aim where you have to track the sight back onto the target. Now, in the description for this video, or perhaps in a pinned comment or something, I'm going to include some examples of these effects in real life. They are visible. Now, of course, in real life, to record the view through a tank gun sight, you're usually doing something like taping a phone to the eyepiece. Um, in tanks with a gunner's primary sight extension, like say, oh I don't know, an Abrams, uh, that is not actually that big of a problem for the most part. You're still going to get some loss in translation from the fact that you're using a camera, not a human eye. You know, you'll see some rolling shutter effect or things like that from the refresh rate. But you get an idea. Um, you do get an idea that if a phone taped to the gunner's primary sight extension is jostling around enough to blur the sight picture, then you could imagine a human gunner bouncing around in their seat. Uh, or as a, you know, a commander looking through the sight extension. On Warsaw Pack tanks, it's a little more difficult because the the sight just has the singular uh, you know eyepiece on it. It is the gunner's sight. That's it. Unless you're a T80 that, or a T90 with the um, the TKN4 sight for the commander, then that's all you have. Um, but you can still see that effect. So this isn't just something that plagues the older tanks. At the moment in Gunner Heat PC, they are the most affected. The Abrams is mostly free from this problem, but it is an effect that will be evident on any tank. And it's just a, a fact of life. That that's how these things are. Now, one interesting anecdote I came across during my travels um, recently, and take this with a grain of salt because I came across it in YouTube comments, but the guy seemed to know what he was talking about enough that I believe that he was who he said he was. Um, it was a, I believe, a former master gunner on the M60, and he was describing that the M60 in particular, with this effect, this jostling vibration of the sight, the part of it that was um, inherent to the sight itself and the stabilizer, not the part that's inherent to the gunner's movement, was tied to the speed the tank was moving at. There was some sort of harmonic vibration thing going on, 
and so the slower the tank is moving, like this for instance, um, it would actually jostle worse on the gunner's primary sight because you get track slap, which is sending vibrations through the tank that the stabilizer and the sight do not like. What he then went on to say is each M60 had a slightly different speed where that vibration was minimized and crews were encouraged on the range to find that speed themselves. Now this isn't modeled as far as I can tell in Gunner Heat PC. I don't know if it's planned. I don't know if they've been able to, you know, verify the, uh, the veracity of that statement. But the point was that the M60 site would actually become more stable as you sped up to a certain point and then obviously it would become less stable again. So it's something to think about when we're playing these games and thinking, oh, this is a bug or this can't possibly be realistic, um, more often than not, even attempts to make the game more realistic may not be 100% of the way there, just because it would be too difficult to code it accurately or it would make people too annoyed to play the game. So we've seen the M60, you know, we've seen the, uh, the vibration affecting the site. By the way, there is a current bug with the M60A3 where the wide field of view on the thermals is way too crisp. That is known and being fixed. We've done it with the M60. Um, I don't think this mission has an A1, so we can't demo it with that, but like I said, it feels like the GPS vibration is worse on the A1 Rise, um, whereas the Orc site is about the same as the Orc site on the A3, but less severe than the GPS. I'll have to do some more testing to see if that's just me with funny feelings, or if that is actually factually correct. Let's hop in the M1IP and have a look. Uh, where do we want to drive? Let's just go the same way we went with the M60. And even in the day site, at 9km an hour, which is the first click of cruise control, the site is pretty solid. No vibration, no blurring. Let's pick up some speed. It looks like our buddy there's decided he's going to make a... Oh, he's coming back to us. He's uh, trying to return to formation in his platoon since that wasn't the platoon lead tank. But as you can see, at the moment, there is no effect of jostling or vibration on the M1 to any reasonable speed. There may be at really high speeds, I haven't checked. Um, but if you're trying to make on-the-move shots above about 40 kilometers an hour, I don't know what you're doing. I personally wouldn't be trying that myself. So, let's, uh... Oh, come on, I believe in you. Oh, the power of gas turbines, aren't they wonderful? Let's just get past our body here. And we'll go into the thermal. Just like the day site, the thermal is not exhibiting any real jostling or shaking or blurring. Uh, you will notice in one of the links I'm going to include uh, down below that even the M1, at least from the gunner's eye perspective, or in this case uh, the phone taped to the GPSE perspective, is still possible to get some sort of shaking or blurring on, just because the tank is moving and the guys inside the tank are moving, or in this case the phone's, you know, taped to the, the side extension is moving. Um, you're going to get vibrations to some degree or other. Whether a human gunner sees less of them because a human body is kind of its own stabilizer in effect, or whether they are actually as bad as they show through the um, recorded video, I don't know. That would be a question for the guy who recorded it, who has stopped by my comment section before actually uh, to speak about some of the challenges of being a real-life tanker. But as you can see, the M1 is uh, pretty, pretty easy pretty chill, doesn't give you any unpleasant issues with the gun sight. Let's hop over to a different vehicle, the BRDM without a stabilizer of any variety and with an already marginable, sorry, marginal gun sight. We're inventing words here today. It's kind of gloomy out. Let's turn that illumination on and let's see how bad this gets. at 15 kilometers an hour, 16, 17. Uh, this is one click of cruise control, by the way. It's just a faster vehicle, so the clicks are larger, I guess. Uh, you can see that, I mean, it doesn't have a stabilizer to begin with, so it's going to jostle regardless, but you can also see there's some uh, bouncing of the reticle in the field of view. 
And as we increase speed, it's pretty likely to get worse. There's our blurring starting to set in at about 35, 40 kilometers an hour. You wouldn't be firing on the move with this thing anyway. It's a hand crank turret. It's completely unstabilized. Like, you would be absolutely insane. I think we proved absolutely nothing with that run, but it just shows that, you know, on an unstabilized site, in an unstabilized turret, it can make things even worse. Let's keep hopping to a T-55. So, those who have played a bit of the T-55 before this patch will probably have noticed the same effect I did, which is that because the T-55 sight is not independently stabilized, it's coaxial to the gun, it sees everything the gun does, um, it would naturally bounce and not be completely steady even before this effect was added. So, on-the-move shots with the T-55 were already not great. So now let's see how it is after this update. Uh, we'll just do it in the lower field of view on the site, I think. We don't really need to zoom all the way in. At 9 kilometers an hour, the site's bouncing. There's not a lot of blurring yet. Let's pick up some speed. And there's our blurring and our bouncing. And of course, because the site is coaxial to the gun and is not independently stabilized, uh, you're going to also get some unpleasantries from that, as the gun stabilizer cannot necessarily keep up with sudden changes in direction, um, even, you know, more so than any of the independently stabilized ones can anyway. Like that little bump there, you see that a lot with the T-55, and it can really mess with you as you're trying to fire on the move particularly at targets which are near zero elevation or actually require some gun depression. So if we increase the speed further, it's going to become essentially unusable. Just pop my head out to make sure we're not going to smack into a tree. We might, so we'll turn a little. The sight glass on this thing is already not the most clear to look through. Oh, there's a nasty bump. The stabilizer couldn't cope. And here, even with the stabilizer on, you can see the pitching in elevation as the gun cannot keep up with sudden changes in the slope that I'm on. Also, there's no cant correction, as you might imagine. So, firing from the short halt is more or less obligatory in this and in the T-62. Um, in an attack, you might fire on the move just as a general suppression measure. I think that was part of Soviet doctrine for these tanks. But if you want to actually hit something, you're probably going to stop to do it from a short halt which would be slap the brakes, take a moment for the tank's hull to stabilize, and then you'd fire at your target. I'm not going to bother ranging in the sight, but say just fire over there, and then you'd pick up moving again. Usually the driver would begin moving as soon as the gun's gone off. Because if you try and fire from the move in this, you can already see I've got my hands off the paddle, so to speak, off the Cheburashka. And you can see how much the sight is bouncing around independent of the actual uh, vibration. Like, you can see that the gun is pitching in relation to the ground, even with the stabilizer turned on. So, there's our T-55. Let's now go through our trucks. They don't, we don't need to worry about stabilizers on those. To the T-72M1. So let's try this thing. Let's point it somewhere it's not going to immediately hit a tree. And let's get moving. Of course, we only have one level of fixed magnification on this. I believe it's 8 power. We're going to go straight to 18 kilometers ish which I think is two clicks of cruise control. It's not actually too bad. There's some... There's a little bit of vibration in the sight, but it's not blurring. You could probably use this out to a reasonable distance. The sight is independently stabilized from the gun, of course, in elevation at least. Like, this is usable to me. You might not be precise um, as the sight vibrates on or off of the target, but you can get around within, you know, the general area of a tank sized target, say at this distance of about a kilometre, maybe a little more. Let's pick up the speed. And of course, being the T-72, you don't have a lot of gun elevation, so as we hit this hill in front of us, you're going to see the gun sight be pitched up into the sky as the sight, even, let alone the gun, cannot aim that far down. There is actually, um, no we might not, might not be as steep as I thought. 
there is actually a certain amount of extra freedom that the sight has where it's still able to stabilize but the gun isn't uh, that's when you'll end up with fire gating the red ready to fire light will go out and you won't be able to fire the gun but as you can see even at this higher speed there we had a bit of a gun bounce and another one even at this kind of speed the sight's reasonably usable pick it up to 30 kilometers an hour this is where it starts to really become a problem the oscillations become much more noticeable the blurring kind of makes it harder to use the sight. And on top of that, you've got to actually laser your target, hope that you hit the laser on the right thing because it's not co-witness to the actual gun sight. And then, you know, also account somewhat for the tank's movement because it can't do auto lead, so Delta D can only compensate in range, not in lead. We then, of course, have the Unity site. I'm not going to dignify this thing with the, the term backup site because it really, honestly, is not. This is more or less just for general observation. If you're really desperate, I suppose you could use this as a backup site, but I would not want to. Then we're going to drive the tank off a small cliff, as you do. And uh, there we have it, as the T-72. So it's still, I would rate it above the M60, but not by much, it's not really that great. Once T64B in particular, the A will be kind of like this, but worse in some ways, uh, fire control wise. But once the T64B and T80B arrive, whenever that is, uh, you will see a significant increase in the quality of Soviet tank gunnery. Um, they have much better optics, much better fire control systems. The T80B in particular has probably the best commander's sight of anything in the, well, it's not in the game itself, but compared to anything else in the game, um, once the commander sites are implemented, I think a lot of the guys that kind of uh, play the Abrams and the M60 a lot will be surprised just how good the T80 is in that respect. It's probably about the equal of the Leopard 2. Anyway, um, I think there's, B yeah, there's BMPs here. We can just do a short one of the BMP. The Bradley isn't in this mission, but the Bradley does experience this as well, as you might imagine. Bradley does have a stabilized gun, but it's not the best stabilizer in the world. So you do get some jitter and some blurring. But here's the BMP. Unstabilized gun and turret. The um, sight is also unstabilized, and it's probably not the greatest quality gun sight ever made. So you'll get the natural pitching mo sort of movements of the uh, vehicle itself, but you also get the blurring and the shaking that you would get from normal motion. Right, I said this would be a short video, we're going on 25 minutes now. So, what is my point with all of this? My point with all of this is that Gunner Heat PC, while not trying to be Steel Beasts level of fidelity, where you have to actually learn how to use the systems and learn the interfaces, Gunner Heat PC is aiming for an experience that is similar to that you would expect in one of these vehicles, without having to delve into the actual field manuals. What does that mean? Well, that means you're going to have to deal with effects like this shaking. You're going to have to deal with things like the little filter screen that covers the BMP's gun sight to protect it from the blast of the Maliukka's rocket engines. You're going to have to deal with the fact that the stabilizers cannot immediately compensate for the tank's pitching mo uh, moment when you slam the brakes on the tank. You will have noticed through some of my gameplay where I'm trying to do berm drills and things um, very incompetently, you'll see me putting shells into the ground in front of me. I shouldn't use the term shells, I guess, but you'll see me putting shots into the ground in front of me or putting them over the target, not because my aim was off, but because I slammed the brakes or suddenly started moving the tank right as I fired. The stabilizer can't keep up with that. These are not magic. This isn't a particular other game where the gun sight origin is the barrel. So, you know, we have to deal with things like parallax here because the gun sights are usually set high into one side of the gun. We have to deal with things like this shaking and blurring effect. We have to deal with the fact that the stabilizer is not perfect and cannot compensate for abrupt um, large scale motions. We have to also compensate for the fact that the gun is not tied to the gun sight. Like the gun does not follow the gun sight, it's not slave to it. It's, if anything, the other way around. Um, more often in a lot of the MBTs, they're independently stabilized and may not always agree on where the other is looking. All these little factors are things that real tankers have to deal with, and they're often bigger problems than what we have so far modeled in Gunner Heat PC. 
I guess my point that I'm trying to make is there's a really strong tendency for a lot of gamers, even in games where people get offended if you say the word game instead of sim. Um, me as a DCS player, I harp on this all the time on my streams, but it's true. Um, there are a lot of gamers who want to say they play sims and they want to pretend they could start the real thing up and, and use it effectively if someone put them in it because they play a sim, but they don't actually understand the material conditions shall we say, of actually using this equipment. They've never sat in a real tank. They've never flown a real aircraft of any variety, let alone a you know, military aircraft. Um, they don't have these concepts that, that these are real things. They're real pieces of machinery and equipment. And just like your car, some of them might be lemons or some of them might have certain quirks. You know, they might have a particular rattle that you can never pin down the source of, but it annoys the shit out of you, and it only happens at a particular speed on some road surfaces. They might have, like the T-72, a laser rangefinder that is almost never co-witnessed to the actual gun sight. They might have a stabilizer on the gun sight that is completely different in terms of what it can and can't handle to the stabilizer on the gun and so you're constantly being fire gated as you drive over terrain because the gun tube is bouncing around and the stabilizer on the site might hold the site dead level um, and you know unless you understand how fire gating works you won't know why you're not able to fire your gun these are things that you just don't experience in other games. Uh, Steel Beast, I believe, models a bunch of this stuff, but I don't even think it models all of it. Like, I, I don't know if Steel Beast models the sights being shaky and unstable and losing focus as your head jostles around. Um, I've watched a fair bit of Steel Beast gameplay, but I haven't, like, internalized it enough to remember if that's a thing offhand, so shoot me. Um, but, like, these are all real-world effects, and it's going to take some time to get used to, but you know, maybe it's worth getting used to them because it causes emergent gameplay. As I said earlier, general practice in the M60 was to fire from the short halt because the sight was too shaky to do much else, unless you had figured out your tank's particular happy speed, at which point you could fire at that speed on the move and that speed only. But because the sights are now shaky, it's forcing people to stop to scan or stop from a short halt to engage which is exactly how the real tanks were used. You, you can see what I'm getting at here, I hope, without actually forcing anything, without heavy-handedly shoving anything down the player's throat or telling them you have to play this way. The little doses of realism that are being added to this, the little tidbits of authenticity that are being developed into this game are forcing people to adapt their playstyle until it begins to resemble how the real thing was used. Another one which is going to happen at some point in the future is infantry. Infantry are going to very quickly curb the habit of driving into a forest and trying to play Tom Clancy Splinter Cell Armored Fighting Vehicle Edition. When infantry are in the game, you are not going to want to drive anywhere near a forest or anywhere near a town unless it's been thoroughly flattened by artillery or somebody else has gone in and confirmed that it's clear because that is Ambush City. Forests and towns are the places where the food chain of combat flips on its head and the tank goes from the apex predator to the helpless prey, while little funny men with drain pipes on their shoulders are able to run amok and fire from any given window or any given copse of trees, and you won't see them until it's too late, even with thermals, especially thermals of this era because they just don't have the resolution. So I would not get too used to things being perfect. I would not get too comfy in saying, oh, well, it's just a bug, or, oh, they've, the devs have overdone it. I'm sure it'll be reduced in the future. No, by all accounts, the devs have actually undersold how shaky the M60's gun sight is, so I would, uh, I would not get carried away with that one. To summarize, uh, get good. Um, if you want to play sim games, come into it with the right attitude, which is an attitude of learning about how the real thing works. Not necessarily studying, no lifing, field manual after field manual, but try and try and figure out how it works. If you get a chance to ride around in one of these things somehow, jump on it. If you know someone who served on these vehicles, talk to them. You know, even within the bounds of human memory not being perfect, a lot of their info is still really good and still really applicable. And even because human memory is imperfect and it's coloured by our perceptions and our, our attitudes, that might give you a, a really useful idea of how something works versus a technical scientific description of what it's actually doing. 
you know, if somebody gives you the impression that, oh, well, this shook around so much we didn't bother using it on the move, that might tell you more than reading the technical manual telling you how much it shakes at a given speed. So, um, half an hour into the video, that's a point I was trying to make. The side shake is intended, it's here to stay, it is a good thing, it adds realism to the game in the sense of the experience of using these vehicles and in the sense of how players are going to have to play these vehicles if they want to be effective in them. Hope you guys got something out of the video. Uh, I very happily encourage discussion in the comments, especially you guys who have actually served on these things and have some input, whether I'm right, whether I'm wrong, whether I'm talking out my ass. I wasn't a tanker, so I can only speak to what limited, limited experience I've had playing around in uh, long since retired tanks. Um, and through watching videos and, and, you know, getting accounts from other people who did serve on them. Anyway, hope this video finds you well. I hope you guys are enjoying Gunner Heat PC. Um, if you haven't checked it out already, uh, it is definitely worth looking into. I'm not going to do my salesman pitch right now because I'm not here to do that. I've left a review of it on its Steam page, which I think sums things up reasonably well. Um, it's early access. Whether there's enough content yet for you to pull the trigger on it or not is an individual decision based on how much you can afford, how much you're excited for the game, whatever. But if you are a tank fan, even if you don't pull the trigger on it right away, um, especially with cost of living being what it is, I would recommend keeping an eye on it because this is uh, very much going the right direction. With all of that out the way and before I can find another way to extend the video for another half hour, Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.